everyone, thanks for joining. We're going to continue our contract management series, and today we're going to be talking about the application of generative AI or LLM technology as it applies or can be applied to contract negotiations. This visual here encapsulates what we're trying to describe. We want to provide the deal teams with a bird's eye view of the playing field. Uh, in our mind, playing field means we want to define and measure benefits uniquely attributable to smart intelligence agents. And you can see we've got actual versus expected as an example, answering questions, deal structuring, that kind of thing. While some of these you can sort of do on your own, like a disciplined approach, the reality is that the AI environment enables this to a much greater degree than was available previously. Okay, lesson plan objectives. Building on the previous comment, uh, there's going to be a public video. Items in black basically are going to be public. But the second video is going to be reserved for our managed service clients, and we'll get into some of those details uh, at, you know, towards the end. But we see there being seven unique benefits available with the new smart uh, AI technology. You can see them here talking about gaps and being able to rerun the model the ability to create simulations available now and, in my view, with the next version of GPT. Why do we think this is going to make money? In role-play negotiations that I've done with various teams, and I did this for a Fortune 20 companies, and most recently with a Fortune 80 company, I can represent to you the difference between the high-low closing results uh, is often 2 to 250%. And that has remained consistent with the various sessions that I've that I've been involved with. I think a 20% improvement is completely reasonable. This is the background. I don't want to spend too much time on this. You can read this. But accessing the site requires a GPT-4 account. Step number two is assembly of the material. Now, the public version is a little different than the private version. The public version is streamlined and it's not that detailed. In the private version, uh, we're going to go into a full toolkit build and we'll talk about order documents and things of that sort. One comment I would make, though, is the document repository inside the site, I call vector number one. And what I mean by that is it's the context that will be modified by vector number two, which are the queries. We have 13 queries we're going to illustrate, but we're going to review five explicit. Then when we're done with that, we're going to come back and do an after action review. We'll spend a little bit of time on some possible next steps. Okay, let's go to the model. Okay, so this is a strategic, I've got a series, you can see we've got some uh, custom sites up here. We're in Strategic Negotiator, and this is what you'll see on your screen when you get there. And I'm going to go in through the instructor door, which is Edit GPT. Just want to go through the configurator for a second. You can see basically the this is the repository of the queries. We've got 13 of them here, and we've got our document repository. The thing I'd recommend everyone start with is I would copy from the from the query box, paste it into here, hit here. What the LLM will do is it now will review the documents, provide some comments. Let's just go through this carefully. So this is the title, this is the summary, and these are some comments. And you can see what it's done. It summarized the document uh, reasonably well. This is our transformation proposal. And here's our business proposal. And then this is a summary. So that's step one. It's important to get level set with the model so it understands what's happening. I'm going to suggest another one here, which is as buyer's agent, describe competitive leverage opportunities, weaknesses, time preference requirements. And it will go through and from the buyer's perspective, provide a view of um, strength and weaknesses. Here's going to describe the additional intelligence or insight needed to improve the negotiating position for the buyer. And I want to give you people time to read this carefully or we don't blow through this too quickly. So we've got a table, data types, acquisition difficulty, cost estimates. This is moderately comprehensive. So the, um, the work starts here. So acting as buyer's agent, we're going to recommend, we're going to recommend how the scope of requirements should be re-architected to improve competitive advantage. Okay. So you can see it's done a, it's given us an annualized cost here of 884, which is good. And so now we know what our BATNA is. If we had to, 
we could insource it for 884. Now the BATNA is, we'll see in the next version how critical the BATNA is, but this is push comes to shove, we can go here. It's not easy, but we've got some costs we can build in and we'll see how this plays on the next, uh, next set of questions. So now we're going to do something slightly unconventional. We're gonna say, given that the seller risks losing the business to an insource solution, as the seller's agent, provide a firm indication of the lowest price that the seller will accept. Completely legitimate, by the way, as part of a negotiation. Okay, so it's suggesting a minimum price of 660 annually. I've done this a number of times, and the answers that I've gotten back range from about 800 to, this is the one of the lower uh, numbers I've received. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, okay, now that we have an indication of where the, the bottom end of the ask range is, let's do this. We're going to say, describe the package of concessions needed by the seller to close on an all-in cost of $575. And we'll just see what it, how it arranges the concessions. Let's just say buyer is agreeable to the above. And here we flip the tables. As seller's agent, so it's going through now and it's going to outline what a, what a drafting package might look like. And so this is nice. It's just it basically closes this out. We want to do one final thing, which is there, we get the LLM's view of an after action review, and let's just do that. So it's assigned an A to the activity, which is, you know, pleasant. Okay. So you've got a sense now of what the queries look like. Use those queries to modify the context of the document. And what you're getting is the conventional large language view of where the seller should step. The seller will be stepping in a different spot. We'll describe this in the private. Let's now move back to our lesson plan objectives. Uh, let's do a quick after action review here. What worked was we had a good range of options. The after action review was, from my perspective, just looking at the quality, I would grade uh, that response at a B level. You saw how some of the responses were too general. The buyer still needed, and this is the most important thing out of the after action review, the buyer still needed to set the tempo and drive the dialogue. Uh, the other thing that didn't work is that the queries had to be applied sequentially by, you know, as direct operator queries. We're not at a place yet where it can execute a broad set of instructions comprehensively. So where are we going? I think GPT-5 will solve the context window problem because we need to keep uh, word counts under 10,000, you know, at least for now. Agent capability along with planning and a version of thinking, I think, is next for the GPT models. Assuming there's an appetite here, I think what's next is we should pick a deal, uh, a deal, and prove that it works. You know, is this really generating benefits, yes or no? The other item I want to put here just to be... Um, just to be difficult is, all right, so I connect analytics and not accept. And what I would say to that is most of the practitioners today, and I can provide some evidence on this, are focused on daily management uh, efficiencies. My representation to the group here is that's 20% of the win. I think the big win is improving skill sets for the practitioners. I think that's 80% of the win.
And what do I mean by that? I mean this. We need to provide the deal teams with a bird's eye view of the playing field. And that means having been able to manipulate the model, develop the BATNOS, have a comprehensive view, and to leverage the, the tools for simulation, open-ended questions, a disciplined approach. I think these are the benefits that are going to provide for the win. Now, in this particular example, we got a win that was bigger than than normal, but I would say this that six sixty number is within the is within the range of what I observed with with, with the role play. So that's it. Available to go forward if there's if there's an appetite. Thank you. Bye bye.